Hi everyone, it's Katie. Um, I've just recently found out about selective colour correction. I know I am way too late to this party, but the reason is I keep forgetting that I have toolbox. I honestly do forget all about that and it's just because I'm so used to using the Bill Blanchin masks when I want to make an image pop um, that I didn't even give the toolbox one a second look but I thought I would just post this up just to show you this is how I found out and how I managed to kind of muck about with it to get the image to pop. Um, yeah, I see this image, it's nice, nice to be rosette, but it doesn't stand out, it doesn't pop, it, there's nothing special about it. And I feel as if a lot of the nebula colour is lost down here. So I'm going to see if I can bring it out. So bear with me. Right, for those who have the most updated pics in sight and have toolbox, you go to script, toolbox, and down here to selective color correction. And this window opens up. Now you can go in and you can change the preview mode from medium, a uh, small sorry, to medium, to, uh, oh, we'll wait till that finishes running, to a large size. And as it states there, it takes a wee bit longer for the changes to happen. So we'll stick with the small size preview. And basically, what I want to do is make this pop out a bit more. So what I'm going to do is I've chose the red mask and I am going to go down to the red channel here in RGB and I am going to raise this up. I'm raising it up high so that you can actually see the difference. And there it is there, uh, as you can see, it brings that out quite a bit. So let's raise it to 54. I'm then going to go and bring the luminance up just a smidgen. I don't want to brighten it up too much. And I can see this yellow round about here, so I'll be highlighting that too. Now, let's just lift the saturation just to see. And I'm just letting that run. It, as I say, it takes a few seconds um, for it to make its changes. And next, what I am going to do is I'm going to go into this yellow channel. I'm not going to change this at the moment. I just like playing about with the tabs to see what each thing does. That's the only way I know how. It's the best way to learn is to see what it actually does. And if it's like normal masks, you know, you can change the channels and colors to whatever suits your needs. So, yeah, we've got that a bit brighter. Now, I'm going to go into the yellow tab, okay? And I am going to bring up that yellow. Now, I didn't apply anything, so it's went back to the normal image. It's just because I want to show you what this does. And we'll go back into the yellow and we'll drag that up. I don't really like that colour of yellow. It's like a greeny yellow. I don't really like that. But you can combat that by taking it back down or, as I say, play with the tabs. T 
take the green down a bit. And there you go. So I'm going to apply that in a second. Let me just raise the luminance in this. Okay. I'll raise it a bit more. Just a bit. As I say, for the purpose of this video. And then I'm going to bring up the saturation just a bit. Okay. So what I would do is I would apply that if I wanted to keep that. And then if I want to go in and change any of the other masks or colours on there to make it pop. So we'll go back in and I'm going to bring up some red. And I'll do that. I'll make it at 30. Yeah, that's starting to look good already. We'll bring the saturation up just a bit. And it's already doing its magic. Perfect. Now, I'll apply that as well. Um... I'm not even sure if I'm doing this correctly. As I say, I just came across this um, a few days ago and was wondering what it was. <laughs> As I say, I don't know how I managed not to see this. Um, right, so I've got the blue mask on now and I'm going to brighten this blue up. So we'll lighten it up a bit. Um, we'll go a little bit more. Let's see. Yep, that's, that's looking all right. I'm quite happy with that. And I can also do the saturation, I guess. Depending how blue you want it, how strong a blue, how light a blue. Personal taste, again, it all comes down to, isn't it? And I'm going to take that up to 30. Okay, now I'm going to show you, if I go into Cyan and take this tab down, this changes a bit. As you can see, it's got a kind of purple tinge to it. So we'll take this back up. Okay. And if I take down the green... Let's see. I'll take the green down. There you go. There's your purple. If I bring the green up, mm, you've got that kind of bluey green colour there. Okay. As I say, it just depends what you're looking for in the actual image. Now, if I go into, let's see... Mm, the red. Let's just do a minus first. Yeah, that's okay. Let's bring it up. There you go. It's back to almost what it was, um, you know, previously. So we'll reset that. And what else can I play with here? I'm going to go into the magenta. Let's see. This is what I, I've always enjoyed is going through tabs, channels, just to see what's there. But I thought I would just show you this because it, for those that don't know or don't use masks or anything like that, you can see how simple and effective that is. And I'm going to apply that. And as you can see, it's running through there. Okay. You can also tick the box where it will show the mask. And if I do create and use a star mask, a star mask will be made and we can brighten up the stars. But I'm not going to hit that button because um, it will just slow everything down. Um, so that's one way 
Now, another way, let's, let's go back, okay? So we're back to our original image. Another way would be to go into processes and go down to mask generation. And you can do a range mask. Um, first of all, you need to do your preview window and then pull your slider up to how much you want to protect and how much you want to change. So I want to change the colours all round this side of the rosette, all that nebulosity. So I'll do that and I'm going to put the smoothness to 100 and I'll do apply. Now that I've got a mask, I'm just going to get rid of the preview. And here's the mask. So I'll drag and drop. And as you can see, this, all this in the red is being protected and everything else can be changed. And by that, what I mean is, if I go into Curves Transformation, uh, first of all, let me hide this mask up here. And if I preview, and if I click on the red channel, the yellow and that will change colour, as you can see. Okay, and I can also go into the blue and change that as well, or take it down. It's entirely up to you. It's, as I say, it's personal taste. Um, if I go into, say, for instance, the green channel, bring that up, you can have that, or deeper reds and yellows, whatever you want it to be. And if I go into, do, 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 let's see, the hue, you can change everything as well. That's the beauty of masks. It will do what you want it to do. Um, it's just how much do you want to apply to it? How much do you want to add to it? If I go into the L channel, that will brighten it up. And then if I go back into the red, I can drag and really make that pop. Okay. And then we'll reset that. If I want to put more red in, I can go into there and, whoops, you know, I, as I say, just experiment. That's all I do. I just experiment. You can go into the saturation, pull it out even more. Look, it looks as if it's on fire, but you can do that and then go into the red. And if you're not sure, pull it down a bit. You know, it's amazing. It truly is amazing. Um, so, yeah, that's you. You've got your mask generation. Um, let's take all this back. And I'll get rid of that mask. And we'll go back to a regular image that was there in the first place. So, that's your mask range selection. And last but not least, if you have Bill Blanchin's masks, um, I am so used to using these, to get rid of that, that is the reason why I never knew about the selective colour one. So what I would normally do is I would go into a red mask, and double click and drag and drop. And once the mask is up, same thing again, curves transformation, and I play with that until I get the amount of colour I want, the amount of saturation. Um, so there's our mask, and I'm going to soften it, or smooth it out a bit, by using a mask blur, and then I drag and drop. And normally that would be a red mask. 
as you know, it's just because we've been using masks prior that it remembers. So then we go into our curves transformation and we click on our preview and our red channel and then do the same thing again. You know, just bring up what you want and I'm going to brighten that up just ever so gently. Okay, and I'll, I'll apply that. And let's just say for daftness, want to brighten this yellow up. Or take it down, but let's say brighten it up. Once again, it looks as if it's on fire. Okay. And you can do that and you can apply whatever you want to it. There you go. You can bring those little bits of red out. Or completely change it all together. It's up to you. Play about with it. Do as you please. And once you feel you've got your yellows or your reds, you would just go up and cancel that mask off once you've applied everything. And what you can do is, say for instance, as I say, the bluey green. Now, hmm, it's more like a kind of cyan -y colour. So we're going to do a cyan mask. And drag and drop. And we'll wait for that mask to come up. You can also remove your stars. And if you've done RGB stars, you can make those colours pop as well. It's entirely up to yourself. Uh, mask blur. And I'll drag and drop and put that on there. We'll get rid of this. And we will go into the blue channel first because cyan is like a mixture of green and blue. So let's see. So there's your blue. And if I go into the green and drag it up, we'll bring it up a bit or we can take it down and get that purpley effect. But I'm going to stick with that and I'm just going to brighten it up just ever so gently. Perfect. And once I've done that, I apply it, reset, take away the preview and delete that mask. And as usual, you can just get into your preview, you can do your RGBK as normal, brighten it up, give it a small, even a small S curve, make it pop, make it stand out. Okay, and you can even go in and take down the saturation or add to it completely up to you. Okay, that's just a bit extreme, but just to show you, you can do whatever you want. Uh, don't be shy about using masks. They're actually very good and, as I say, they allow you to go in and make your image pop. I'm just going to take that red down just a little. There we go. That'll do. So I hope that was useful for you guys. And I'm sure there's lots of you out there will be going, yeah, we knew. We knew about the toolbox, Katie, and we knew about selective colour correction. Well, for once, I didn't actually know. So there we go. You learn something new every day. Every day is a school day. <laughs>